welcome everyone back to Father Knows Something. And yes. uh, sitting to my left is Justin, and he's got a few questions to write in to discuss. And so we're going to hear what he has, and Justin, let's see what we can come up with. Let's do it. Today we are diving in on relationship advice. Uh, I don't know how well, I mean, I'm, I've been having relationships since I was, you know, 16 years old, but I don't think I've mastered it yet, but I'm, here we go. Let's here give it a are. shot. <laughs> All right, starting off, dear Jerry, I, female 25, am in a new relationship with a guy 24 that I really like and want to see more of. We met through a co-ed sports league a couple months ago and I've been dating for a couple weeks now. The problem isn't with him at all, it's with me. I am an overthinker and overanalyze everything, from someone's mannerisms to tone of voice and inflections to words that are said. There are no red flags, so to speak, or anything going on that would cause me to question the relationship. The struggle is with myself. I want to be stress-free and relax and have fun with this new relationship, but I feel like my brain is eating me from the inside out, preventing me from enjoying this relationship. I appear as a relaxed and stress-free partner, but on the inside it feels like a constant struggle with myself. Any thoughts as to how to calm my inner monologue and learn to just enjoy the relationship for what it is and take things at surface value? I think the fact that you recognize all these different things going on is a great start. Um, the fact that he's 24, you're 25, in the big scheme of things, that is nothing. That is, you're well-suited far as your ages, your experience levels in life, and as you, you know, get through the next, certainly easily the first year, you'll start seeing if you're growing uh, emotionally, uh, not only chronologically, because a lot of people all we all grow chronologically, but not all grow emotionally. And this is where you're going to start really seeing if you guys, you know, blend well, keep going and have fun and not able to let little things set you off. I think what happens is that sometimes you're looking for something to obviously, you know, not jive with you. But the more time you spend with them and, and you relax and just let it come, and develop, the better you're going to be. So I would just say, let it grow. And if, if it tips out, it, it's best for the both of you if it tips out early and uh, you recognize that kind of you know thing. But pay attention. You know, keep your senses up to see what does trigger you because the triggers will be there if, if they're really there. And then you have to pay attention to those. Yeah, you almost can ruin a good thing before it even happens just with your own internal thinking and, mm -hmm. and well it, typically it's experience with something else that is making those triggers a voice that you heard or a mannerism that you heard that you didn't like it didn't work mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you know that mannerism or that voice or that you know pattern uh gets replayed and your your subconscious picks it up and says no i don't want that yeah so a lot of times it's real, and sometimes you just, you know, it isn't. So like, like you're doing, just take it easy, relax, and you'll see how it develops. And let us know. Yeah, and what she put for, do you have an ideal outcome? She said, stress-free and enjoyable relationship, putting little pressure on things, especially in the beginning, and to help my brain go from 100 miles per hour to more like a steady 25 miles per hour. I just think if you just take things, take day by day and, you know, see what happens naturally. You know, or letting a relationship grow organically is the way that I've been practicing my life lately. And if they succeed, they're going to succeed beautifully. And if they don't, then hopefully they, they, they don't succeed, but in a beautiful way. So you both can, you know, Go your separate ways, but hopefully maintain the respect for one another, the truth and the honesty with one another, that you can maintain a friendship. Yeah, and maybe when you get stuck in a cycle of overthinking, overanalyzing, and, and thinking 20 steps ahead, 
maybe it's just take a step back, trust your gut feeling, but don't necessarily try to, you don't need to predict everything that's going to no. happen. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I, I guess a good exercise is that when you start doing that, do a segue, a, a complete alternative direction for that event that you guys are going to do next, something that you would never do, surprise both of you, and then the reward that you'll start uh, reinforcing yourself with is that when I get this feeling, I do something totally off the wall with him, unplanned. We have a great time, better time than what we've, we planned it and had all this anticipation. Yeah. And uh, you'll start rewarding yourself subconsciously that you'll, it might, might, might help. Trick your mind, I guess, if, for lack of a better description. But always be true and discuss all this stuff that you're going through uh, really with him. So he has an understanding of whatever you're going through, it will help make you guys stronger. He'll build it with you. Makes a better house. Yeah, that does. You got another one for me? All right. Up next. Okay. Another one. Dear Jerry, I'm bisexual and have been ever since I was a child. I want to come out, but I don't want to cause any problems since my family is super conservative. My cousin told me I would make everyone uncomfortable and would just cause problems. My mom is super accepting and loves the LGBTQ plus community, so I'm planning on telling her soon, but I don't know what to do about my grandparents and great-grandparents. Any advice would be very much appreciated. In our home, uh, I have a sister that is uh, gay, and she was bisexual before she really, and maybe maybe she's always going to be bisexual, but she's committed to a woman at this point in time. And I remember when, you know, the, the torture that she went through before any of us really knew that she was gay. I su- certainly suspected things. The biggest thing is, is I think your parents, most importantly, and including your grandparents, want one thing. They want you to be happy. And they want you to feel yourself. And if they see you with a person that you are yourself and that you can be around and be yourself, they're going to accept that. And I think generationally, we, they have different first thoughts. I, I mean, my grandmother was born in 1901. I'll never forget, I think I was 24. And, and religious differences were the big problem when, when I was dating. And she said to me, I don't care. And she was actually <laughs> very forward thinking. She said, I don't care who you marry or what religion they are, what color hair they have, what color skin they have. All I'm interested in is that you have a meeting of the minds. And if you bring someone home that you have a meeting of the minds, I will love them. And that was unheard of, to have that kind of broad thinking. So I would not be afraid of telling your parents. I think be bold, be you, have integrity, and... Go with what you believe, and I think you will be fine. And if the grandparents are just blatantly non-accepting, then... They, they will always still accept you. They may not accept that, that person, but that's, that's on them. That's not on you, and they'll have to figure that one out. They'll, they'll start seeing you having uh, a relationship with somebody that brings out the best in you, and they might alter. Uh, again... The person that you choose really has to, you have to bring the best out in each other to, to, for a parent to really accept and, and love them. I mean, when I met Justin, I had no idea what to expect out of him. And he brings the best out in Morgan, and Morgan brings the best out in Justin, and I'm the happiest guy in the world when people ask me about them and what do I think about them or what do I feel. And my answer is, I'm happy. My, my kids are happy. Uh, all my children are happy with who, with the relationship. They are able to be themselves, and that's what we strive for. I love that. So they wrote for the, do you have an ideal outcome? Uh, they put, I just want people to accept me for who I am. I don't want to be shunned from my family or to be told it's just a phase or have to listen to my family recite Leviticus to tell me I'm going to hell. I go back to this to the same thought. That's achievable. And the only person that you really have to uh, be true to is yourself. And they will follow suit. And if they don't follow suit, that's their loss. 
I know you'd lo- I know you want to see them follow suit and you have that comfort zone. But if you're truly comfortable in your sexuality and you're comfortable with who you're who you're with, then how could anybody not accept you and love you? Because they love you and accept you now, they'll love you and accept you then. I know that um, it certainly worked that way in our family. My sister's relationship, she's now been married since uh, gay marriage was legal, but she certainly was committed and has been with her spouse for, you know, for 30 years. There was, there was 100% acceptance because of my sister's transparency and, and certainly honesty when she finally made that choice. And I, I, I really wish she would have made her choice 20 years earlier because it would have made the frustration that she lived for those 20 years that she didn't come out it would have made her life a lot happier and easier. Beautiful. Let's go to the next one. You have another, you have another one for me? Oh, I have plenty. Let's see how we can do <laughs> Keep them rolling. Dear Jerry, my best friend is engaged and her fiance sucks. Do I tell her or let her marry someone who isn't good enough for her? This is her second engagement, and I really feel like she would rather go through with this than be embarrassed by calling off another wedding. She just doesn't seem happy, and when I ask if she is, I get a list of excuses as to why she seems unhappy but swears everything is fine. Tough question. Very tough. Tough question. My knee-jerk reaction in my brain, I'm going to start with. You need to stay out of it. You need to let her tell you she's unhappy. You need to let her say that she has questions. She has to come to this conclusion herself. As soon as you put the wedge in there, you are setting yourself for, up for destruction with your friendship as well. As much as you may think you're being honest and you can be truthful with her, this is a guy she's gonna, that she wants to marry. Until she can figure that out on her own. I mean, you could certainly, I would say, have discussions with her about her happiness, about growth. Does she feel that you're doing this? And let her see the, the way on her own, see her behavior around other people if she's looking, if she really does seem content, if she really is being herself. These are the things that you can certainly talk about. I don't recommend that you say, don't marry him. I think that that is a, just a setup for destruction. In my experience, that's what I've always, you know, it's always come up to. Uh, I have certainly been in relationships that people did not like the relationship I was in, including my daughter hated some of the relationships I was in, and she would you know, come at me, and my answer was, mind your own business. It's my relationship. I'll figure it out. And it, and it made it difficult. So my preference is when, when people, especially in family, have an issue with someone that's in the, someone's life, welcome that person, be supportive, the best you can, and let them trip it out themselves. Don't help it. It will happen one way or the other. It will happen. Yeah, there's there's some element to people needing to figure things out on their own at some point. They, The best way they're going to learn is if they go through it. Mm-hmm. If they fail at X, Y, Z, that's how they'll really learn from themselves, not mm-hmm. from an outside source. Yeah, and and I say this to parents too. Don't try to control your children. It's just going to drive them away. Let them figure out themselves. I've never come to you guys and said, you know, gee, I don't like what you're doing, or gee, do you really think you guys belong together? Or gee, why aren't you guys getting married by now? You've never heard any of this shit out of me. Yeah. I mean, I realize that there are young adults, they're, they're, they don't need me to figure out their life. They're going to figure it out themselves. They have a question for me. They'll ask me, and I'll give them my, my heartfelt you know, answer, and it's what I'm doing with you. Yeah, so taking the, the route like you first mentioned and checking in on her and her happiness as a person, not right. necessarily going in and taking down the relationship, right. but maybe by talking with her and helping her. See, having, having Helping her see what good relationships are, and letting her say, gee, I wish my relationship was like that. And then at that point in time says, well, see if you can make it that. And if you can't, maybe maybe it's not the right one. But that you can do, but you can't look at them and say, don't marry him. (laughs) His mother was a big game hunter. (laughs) And she disagrees. Oh my gosh. (laughs) 
So, yeah, don't do that. Is there any more? That- uh, they, they put as their ideal outcome, just want my best friend to be happy and with someone who is on her level. Then, then be supportive of her as your friend and trust that she is going through all these different uh, tests to f- make sure that's it. And you could keep pointing out other tests you know, for her to try to do, but don't say, don't do it. Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's roll on to uh, another one. All right, we got a a lengthy one here. Okay, let's see how we can do it. Dear Jerry, last year, I, 19 female, went to college and a friend, 19 male, from high school, let's call him Daniel, and I decided to hook up. We did this a few times, after one of which he asked me to take a picture with him. This is important for later. Uh Uh-oh. We continued to sleep with each other a couple more times until we both decided we wanted different outcomes with different people rather than meaningless sex. We started talking to different people and both ended up in relationships. We kept things friendly and this resulted in our new partners and us two becoming a sort of messed up friend group. I became a lot closer with the girlfriend, 19 female. Let's call her Allison. When college came to an end, Allison moved in with Daniel, just one town over from my hometown, so her and I ended up hanging out a lot. Her relationship was going well, as was mine, but one day when Allison and Daniel got into a fight, Allison drove over to my house to talk. She was telling me about what happened, and we were also smoking weed. I live in Canada where it's legal. Eventually, she got over the anger of the fight, and we were just talking. Somehow, Daniel and I sleeping together came up, and she was talking about how she found out he had a checkered past when it came to sleeping with women. I didn't press further because I knew that just before the time of us sleeping together, he had also been sleeping with another 20-plus women in our residence building. She continues on and casually slips out that he kept an album on his phone of a selfie of him and every girl he has ever slept with, and there was tons of pictures amongst was mine. None of them were nude, to my knowledge, but still creepy as hell nonetheless. It was almost as if he was keeping a personal award for sleeping with me and all these other girls. Maybe this isn't as big as I seem to think it is, but I'm not totally sure what to do. All I know is I no longer feel comfortable around him, which is fine, as they went back to college, I didn't. What do I do? Is this as creepy as I think, or am I overreacting? Um, wow. Well, there's a couple different directions. First of all, she can certainly call Daniel up and say, please delete the picture of me. You know, that, that's of me. I, I don't feel comfortable with, with, with how you're showing it to people. Right. And if you have any respect for me, please delete it. Either he will or he won't. Obviously, the guy is got something loose. You know, just to, to keep his trophies, as we'll call it. Yeah. If that's really what it is, that's a problem. But she can certainly have a conversation with him. Right. That's number one. And then number two, then she can make her decision. Is her friendship have that kind of honesty that she really wants to keep this guy in, in her book as her friend? far as the the woman that you know has an issue of who he slept with look any woman that goes out with me knows i'm 64 years old i haven't been married and i've had some relationships in my life sure and if you think i'm a virgin the question really is is what is the intimacy that with the person you're sharing with now how you, how do you guys connect what do you do with one another as far as growing right and if, you, if you're going to just have a physical relation, a hookup relationship, hey, those are the rules. And everything that comes with those rules apply. If it's going to be a, a deep, uh, seated, we're going to grow and enjoy each other as a couple to bring out the best of as friends and, and, and monogamous is a monog- with the intent of monogamy, then, then that's what, it, then you define it. But the guy's past really means nothing until it could... Some people will never have uh, a monogamous life. They want to hook up continually through their life. That's, that's what they're about. There's yeah. no, 
And there are certain people that say, no, I really want to find one person. And if maybe the next Jane Doe is that person, and all of a sudden this guy has a, a paradigm shift in what a relationship is, he found the right one, he says, I want to spend my life with that individual. And that has happened. I mean, it, I can only go on my own experience. It has happened to me. Yeah. Well, and I think the biggest part of this was that he took it right after they hooked up. So it kind of, when you find an album of that, you can only assume. I'm going to assume that it, it's a trophy. And it's, a, it's for bragging rights of all the women that I was with. And I got to sleep with these hot chicks. And hey, buddy, check this one out. And who knows what else was, what else kind of pictures that we don't know. Yeah. Well, and I've had friends, guys and girls that literally have lists in their phones of all of the people they've ever slept with. But maybe when you take it, which is a, its own thing in itself, but when you take it to the level of like, hey, let me grab a quick picture real quick, and then you stack, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I think, I think it's twisted. But it goes back to the same thing. If you take your time to know somebody before you start hooking up with them, that chances of that happening are far less. If, unless, unless you don't care. If, that's, if you're down with it and you're cool that, that, that you're going to become a number and they're a number for you and that's your lifestyle... I'm not judgmental on, on, on anyone out in the world who pick their lifestyle what they want. That's their choice. We live, in that, we live in a world that, thank God, we have freedom at least where we live, that you can do whatever the hell you want, as long as it's within the guidelines of law. <laughs> but So there's, there's no judgment on that. But if, it's, if it doesn't work for you, then pace yourself when you get involved with somebody. Be smart who you're getting involved with and make sure that it's for, it matches what your uh, expectations are and your needs. And for her ideal outcome, she just said, I just really need to know if I'm being dramatic or not. Thanks, Jerry. means a lot. Uh, I don't think you're being dramatic. I think that, again, uh, you need to have a conversation with him because you were there and it... it that, that is you and that you have rights. I imagine you have some kind of rights. I'm, I mean, I don't, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know the law on some of this, but I can certainly know that if he has any kind of integrity and if you present it correctly, that if there is anything that you would prefer him not to have and say, I would, I would be more comfortable if you would delete it and see that he deletes it and he takes it off of his deleted uh, folder in his phone. Well, we wish them the best. Hmm? We wish them the best. We do. Onward. Hold on a second. Pause. I'm back. Okay. All right. Onward and forward. Here we go. Forward and onward. All right. Dear Jerry, I'm in a situationship with my ex, and we're still in love with each other. He's leaving the state in two months, and I don't know where to start with the eventual healing that I know I'll have to do when he leaves. What do you recommend I do? Also, thank you for all the dadly advice that I can't get from my own father that passed in 2018. Every time you're on the podcast, it's warming to my heart. I appreciate you so much. Uh, very, very sweet of you, and, and I'm sorry to hear of your loss. I really am, and, I'm, and I am here, and I'm glad we, that you've been picked to... Uh, to address the question. You know, time is going to be an interesting one for this one. Yes, you can certainly do all the conscious efforts to stay busy and do something that's constructive for yourself. I've always heard, go out and date, let it heal, you know, find a replacement. That doesn't always work. Time is what is really the necessary thing to process everything about him. Look, you're going to miss him. You're going to miss the shit out of him if, if you guys are truly in love. I have, by experience, know that because someone's not with you daily, that the, the pictures in your mind's eye of all the experiences that you had those years past don't go away easy. And sometimes there's, they'll always be there. If you guys aren't made to be together and something doesn't happen to bring you back together, 
that somebody else will come in your life and they won't be him, but they'll be who, are, who they are. And something happens with that relationship that will bring out the best in both of you that you'll develop this whole new level of, of intimacy and love that not that you won't care for the other person or love them, but the in love portion that has that binds you up and doesn't allow you to go forward will heal and your love will, will move. It, it will change. And yes, I've mentioned in the past, a lot of my exes are very close with me and good friends. And, and I don't look at them and say, gee, I wish I was in bed with them. None of them. And I can remember at a time in my life where I could never imagine not being intimate with them. But that healed. It did go um, to a different level with them. And I hope that will happen for you sooner than later um, that you're able to move on if that's really the direction that this thing will you know, truly go. We don't know where it will go. We don't know how either one of you are going to react when this thing is, you know, when you really separate. I know one thing that if you truly love one another, that your friendship will, will stay true. And, and if you had respect for one another and you didn't lie to each other and it's all solid, there's something, there's something else that's going to come out of that relationship in a long, deep friendship for, for years to come. And even though you'll be with somebody else, if that's where it goes, it will be, it will be stronger and better than what you ever would have had with this fellow. So stay, stay optimistic. That's my advice to you, of, that we know whatever happens at the end of the day, it's going to be good. It's just going to, you're going to have to have some patience until you get there. So uh, if you live by water, paddleboarding is good. And if you live by snow, <laughs> skiing can't hurt. That's right. I think in addition to time as well, um, space is important too. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he will be living in a different state Mm -hmm. might help jumpstart the healing process. It does. It does. You know, that part does, does help. Like the fact that you can't just drive over there when you're feeling sad or then you can confront it kind of head on. I've, I've had breakups where because we didn't have them locally and it took a lot of discipline just to to let it go and let it heal and go its own way. Yeah. Morgan's mom and I, we, you know, 1,800 miles does a lot to have things help heal. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, like, it, it, uh, there are different things that help it, but uh, I do know at the end of the day, you will be fine. I really do. Just go on with life, go on with living and building and new experiences, and you'll be, you'll be great. The ideal outcome that they put is, ideally, I don't want to cut him off completely. I just want to feel okay again without him, which I think aligns perfectly with what what you said. Yeah, time, and, and it it may take a year. It may take more. It may take less. Everyone everyone figures it out for themselves in their own time. It, it could all work, and you guys could one day sit down and play. What's the game we love to play, Catan? Sit at a table, have dinner, and play Catan afterwards. There you go. I think that is perfect. All right. Next up. Yes. Dear Jerry, I, 20 female, and my boyfriend, 29 male, have been dating for about a year, and I recently moved in with him. The age gap doesn't bother me slash us much because we are both working our normal jobs. We are both in the same stages of life. We are both from Germany, so you don't have to go to college. However, I always feel like I'm being suffocated or have no space to myself. I'm also super irritated all the time, even just from small inconveniences. Just for information, he owns the house and he had no problem having me change things to my liking, things I paid for. I still feel like a guest in the house, not like it's my home. It's really hard to feel comfortable. A situation that made me feel like I was a guest, was I had a friend from another city visit me, and she, 22 female, wanted to stay at our house. However, my boyfriend said she cannot stay over at his house because he doesn't know her. He has friends that I don't know or never met stay over at the house. I was just wondering who is in the wrong or if no one is in the wrong. 
Thanks so much for the response. I love the podcast, and I'm a huge fan of yours. Wow, this is a really good one. So you have the power for what's best for you. And I look at this and see that you've moved in with a guy who is obviously very controlling. And you now have the power to decide, does this work for me? Now, I didn't say you have to, does the relationship work for you? Does living with him work for you? Because evidently what I'm reading between the lines, this, this is not working for you. Now, if I'm misunderstanding the between the lines, then disregard all this. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take it on the path that I understand that you're not very pleased with his behavior, his acceptance of what you can and cannot do. It's not our home, it's his home. If are you a roommate? Are you a relationship? Is this a guy you want to have a life with? Is that your end game? Because if all that is the case, that this is your end game to have a life with him, and you're walked into moving in with him because you want to have a home with him that is both of your homes, and you want to have the comfort of saying, we as a couple, we stand together, we, we believe in each other, and this is what we both want, is to make each other happy, and we like the same things. I don't get that here <laughs> at all. Yeah. So... That's my feeling. And if you stay, then I would say you're staying because you're going to accept these rules. And if you're feeling uncomfortable with it, then you're in the wrong to stay. And you could do this. It might be an exercise. Say, you know something? Uh, I don't think this is really the arrangement that, I, that I'm looking for uh, today. And I think that you and I have a total different idea of what living together is. And I'm not telling you that you have to change. I'm just telling you that I'm not willing to live within this situation. And I'm clear that unless you tell me something different right now, the way it's going to be moving forward, I am out of here tomorrow, if not already today. Yeah. That's my opinion. I don't know if he'll change, but I, I think that if you open that dialogue saying, I am prepared <laughs> to move out right now, unless you get a different idea of what we are together and how we're and what our end game goals are, because you guys are so misaligned right now from what I feel. I see no alignment. Yeah, I mean, when you start noticing yourself becoming super irritated all the time, even at little things, oh. you know there's something bigger going on. Oh, it, this is just the underlying thing. There, there is something huge going on here, and, I, and my answer is run. Yeah. <laughs> run the other direction. Yeah. And he, he will immediately understand uh, by you turning around and walking out that door that this is a behavior that's not going to be acceptable by you. Yeah. And, and no arguing necessary, no voice raising, no swearing, no you know, name calling. This is just, hey, I didn't sign on for this. Right. And you know, think about it. This is not something that's gonna, that, that he's going to all of a sudden realize overnight that he's going to change his ways because that's not going to happen either. It's going to take some real work on his part to understand what it what it is going to take to make you as a woman happy as as his mate right and maybe removing that main problem of the living together situation might allow them to focus in on is this relationship right yeah but i i don't think that there's any possibility right now for it to fix itself by by an open conversation. I think that this is so serious that immediate uh, departure from that plan is is initiated right now. Right, and maybe it's representative of deeper issues that extend past just the living situation that yeah. this is all highlighting. Because her ideal outcome was just some advice on how to solve the problem and basically meet in the middle, but. It may not be a meet in the middle type situation. It's not, not, not right. It, it, because even if she sits him down and says, you know something, I'm not comfortable with the way, way this is rolled out. 
and you're going to need to make some changes. It's, that turns it into, you need to do something. That's a battle. He needs to say, I want to, you know, she says, I need, I need to leave. And then he'll say, why? And you'll say, because you really need to decide what you want. And I don't know what you really want, but I know what I need. And I can't tell you how to, you know, what you need to do. You have to figure out what you want to do. Right. And when you put it into a, a, a into a place where he wants to do something and he wants to be someone different, it takes you out of from, from forcing his, you know, putting a thumb and controlling him. No one wants to control anybody. Yeah. We all want to bring out the best in one another. And that's why I think immediate re- reassessment of living is the first paramount uh, choice. Yeah. Well said. Sometimes I use the wrong word for the wrong thing. Trust me. My niece called me on it uh, on a phone call when she heard me on the podcast on, Mor- on Morgan's podcast, and she said, "You know, you used her word totally incorrect." She goes, <laughs> "I love you, but I was laughing my ass off." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, rolling right along. Yes, let's keep going. All right, dear Jerry, I am a 28 female PhD student and currently over four years single. It is really hard to date, and a lot of my friends tell me my standards are too high. So my contract goes until end of 2023, and then I will probably have to move for a job. Dating is hard because if I go into a long-term relationship, I want to know from the beginning that the person I am dating is willing to move with me for a job. Sadly, in molecular biology, my job possibilities are limited. It is not that I want the person to make that decision early on, but more that I know if the relationship goes well, it is a possibility to move together. A lot of my friends say that this is too much to ask from a possible partner. Is that so? I just feel like I do not want to waste my time dating someone when there is no chance they can commit to me long term. I also understand that moving for someone is quite a big thing to ask. What do you think? Thanks so much. Love the podcast. End your socks. Oh, by the way, we're wearing uh, Mr. Monkeys today. Um, uh, Molecular. Molecular, yes, biology. Um, Bright woman, because I can't even say the word. (laughs) (laughs) I think that you're a planner. I can hear it and feel it. Love isn't planned. I think that you should be a little less structured in that to the part where you just need to go out and meet people and enjoy their time. And as you are meeting people and learning more about them and they are learning about you, you will see if that is the kind of person that A, uh, is going to be a good match for you, that, that the two of you will be able to go through life and grow and if you have to move, you'll move. And if you have to change your job to do something different, you will. That's what relationships are all about. Coming in and predefining all this stuff, trust me, it doesn't work. Yeah. You say, are you going to want to have five kids? Are you going to want to, you're going to, want to move? Are you, going to, are you willing to do this, willing to do that? When you fall in love and you see that person's eyes and you know that you want to do the best for them because they have an opportunity. And if you can make it happen, you are the first person that wants to figure out how to make it work for them. I used to laugh saying, you know, going on a, on a first date, here's my line card. Yeah. <laughs> Read all about me. Right. <laughs> it doesn't work. You know, be, be you. Simply be you. Go out, enjoy, have fun. And see where it takes you. That's all you can do. You don't know who that magic guy is going to be. You just, you don't know. And I honestly, I sympathize with this feeling too, because there was a time when I lived in New York Mm -hmm. that I knew we had committed to moving to LA. We Mm -hmm. knew that was coming. And I always thought, well, what if I meet someone that I just, you know, when you meet someone and it's, it's kind of like that cliche love at first sight, mm-hmm. but you just know you're really into them and you, you're going to want to see it further. Mm-hmm. 
I, I was a little bit worried myself that that would happen with a move looming. And it's funny because then when I end up in L.A., I meet a girl named Morgan, and her plan is to move back to Minnesota Absolutely. when she finishes school. Absolutely. That was her plan. I didn't react and go, oh, my God, okay, this isn't going to work. This is I, – I didn't freak out. I didn't – I just was like, all right, cool, and just went on, and we just kept doing our thing, and you just, she's still here. <laughs> you just don't know what, what will happen – once, once the, the sun and the moon and the universe aligns, it just, that's what makes love so great. And her ideal outcome is she just wants some good advice, which I think you hit. My, I, think, I, I think I gave her my advice is just take day by day and go on with her life as is, meet people. And if she falls in love, you guys will work it out. Don't, don't, don't stop living because you're worried what's going to happen tomorrow. So live today. <laughs> yeah, you might meet someone who is totally down with the move and just is ready to do anything, and it's just that perfect relationship. And then you'd be, you'd be sitting there thinking like, oh my, thank God I didn't cut this off before it could be anything, or I didn't stop anything from happening because I was worried about moving in the future. Right. You just have to just take day by day and live for today don't worry about tomorrow. If you're living for tomorrow today, you're going you're gonna to miss something. Don't cut, don't, don't, yeah, don't cut, don't, no, that don't was cut good. your. No, that was good. Let's, let's quit while we're ahead. Okay. Let's put that on a t-shirt too. <laughs> and that concludes our show. So sad to see us go. Will we be doing this again? Are we going to be together again? I sure hope so. Oh, I can't wait. It's up to the fans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Bring us back. Any sign off? Any sign off? Yeah. I don't want to sign off. Any way to say goodbye, see you next time? Oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, everybody. Have a great week, and uh, we'll be back next week. I'm Jerry. I'm Justin. And we are now saying goodnight. <laughs>